Ah, we're live. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining in, uh, or at least uh, hopefully joining in soon. So uh, my name is Todd Rains. I uh, am streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. So I do this every Friday um, at 2.30. So uh, let me take myself out of the picture, down in the picture a little bit here. Let's go on this side this time. So uh, the live stream is all about uh, all things wood turning. Um, this series, get my head out of the way, small project series. Uh, we're making little projects. So um, all things wood turning. We, along the way, we'll talk about tools, equipment, processes, techniques, and wood and materials. So um, let's uh, uh, let's have fun together. Uh, Two thirty. Todd is uh, my moniker on Friday. So I'm happy to be here. It's always fun to get out in the shop and uh, and chat with you folks and, and, you know, play a little bit. So I appreciate you all joining in. Um, I'll be here next week as well. And then uh, I think two more up until December 11th. I'll be taking a little break and we'll start a new series in January. So, or sometime, maybe, maybe mid-January or late January. So I've yet to figure it out. So we, we let's, uh, let me get... Um, Oh, we've got somebody here. Let me get my face off of here for a second. Lee Beatles, will there be big turkey? Will the big turkey be there today? <laughs> uh, not today. Maybe next Friday, because next Friday is the Friday after Thanksgiving. So um, we will uh, we will certainly be here. Um, you know, stuffed. Um, I see possibly. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But thanks for joining, Lee actually kind of nice you joined today um especially because of the project we're doing today so um stick around you'll want to see what we got uh, what i got showing today uh, shelly says hi to lee thanks for joining so yeah absolutely so uh this uh this time around this week i didn't really push uh this um facebook post around too much uh so i wanted to see how how it would affect the audience uh and stuff like that so um Hopefully the regulars are joining back in and, and, uh, as, uh, you can see there, Shelly and Lee are on YouTube with the little YouTube icon in the corner. And we got Lan Brady joining again from, uh, North Carolina joining via Facebook. So, um, thanks for joining guys. Let's, uh, let's get that picture off and let's look at the overhead shot and I'll put myself down here for a second. So what are we doing today? Well, um, we are going to turn a pen and, uh, we're going to use, uh, some new pen turning equipment. So Tony's in the house. Hey, Tony, good to, good to have you here. Thanks for joining. So uh, it keeps highlighting. Why is that doing that? That's weird. Sorry. I'm bouncing around. Shelly's saying hi to Tony. My, uh, my mouse, uh, skills. Um, are not good. There we go. Left-handed. Sorry about that. Okay, so here is a pen that I turned uh, just uh, about an hour ago. Um, I was feverishly, uh, so I, I had a bunch of, uh, this is a giveaway, so identify this, uh, um, this emblem or whatever this is on here. Uh, we know what it is. Um, I think I need to get the barrel trimmer out, so to trim one of these. So I'll start setting that up. And I am using, so because uh, normally I don't do sort of a product, you know, spotlight, you know, live stream, but um, and I'm glad Lee is on because uh, Lee bought uh, one of the pen mandrels and some bushings and stuff and, and uh, um, you yeah, know, he had some questions about it. So, um, and then Tony last week. Uh, we were talking about pens and, and by the way, Tony, that, uh, vertex magnetic with the Alamo engraved on it. That looks beautiful. I like that. So he sent me a picture. I, I uh, didn't have time to get it uploaded to, to show on, on screen, but, uh, Tony, you should post a, uh, post a Facebook post to that. So, uh, but this is the, uh, woodpecker pen mill kit. This is a five piece set. There is a 13 piece set or sorry, 11 piece set, uh, with all the, uh, all the mill sizes. So we will use this. Uh, normally, you would want to do this in a drill press, but since I have my camera set up here, we're going to do it on the lathe. So it's another way of doing it. 
Um, it seemed to work out fairly well um, this morning. Um, so we will do it again. So, folks, keep guessing on that service ribbon. I will uh, stick it right there so you can kind of see it. And uh, as we move forward, oops, <laughs> wrong way around. We'll get this little uh, pin jaw chuck on here. That's how we're going to hold our blank. And we will get a Jacob's chuck just down here in this side. Oops, wrong way. So this uh, pen mill, uh, let me see, where are we at? What's Tony saying? The YouTube video kept freezing up, had to switch to Facebook. Oh, okay, well, let me check my health over there on uh, YouTube, so. Yeah, okay, stream health. It's healthy, it says no data, what does that mean? Oh, that was before the live stream started. So, excellent connection. So, it looks fine on my side, Tony. Uh, let me uh, check YouTube. Seems fine, too, as well. I mean, uh, on the uh, the website. So, but either way, uh, you'll see the same thing. So, uh, so that's good. Uh, thanks for the heads up, Tony. We'll uh, we'll keep an eye on that stream health. And uh, make sure we're we're going. No, oh, Shelly says my hair is too. So uh, it may have been a uh, a glitch on our end with uh, with the internet connection. But keep guessing, folks. It's not Vietnam, but what uh, what war is this ribbon service ribbon from? So we're going to put the pen. So this is the nice thing about the pen mail. So if we take a closer look at this. Oops, wrong way. You can see that this end of it is trilobular, or you know, has three facets, and that's going to, uh, you know, integrally lock within a three-jawed chuck. So that's a nice touch. I like that. Make sure that it's uh, it's nice and secure in a in a three-jawed chuck, or sorry, Jacob's chuck. Uh, we'll widen that out a little bit. This is the, was it 27 60 fourths? Yeah. And I had to, uh, had a little sanding on, uh, on the mandrel here, the mill, because uh, my epoxy was not quite cured and we'll probably have the same problem. So, oh, Lee says I had to restart uh, YouTube also. Hmm. Okay, well, hopefully. Hopefully it's better. It says uh, it's okay, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Um, Korea? No, not Korea. So um, keep trying, folks. In the meantime, hi, Benny. Thank you for joining. Okay, perfect. Did I miss one? I didn't see Benny. Maybe it'll come through. My mom, I might get the, the feed a little slower. Um, so maybe Shelly, which one do you want me to turn? Uh, let me know. And uh, we'll go from there. I'm going to turn them all eventually, but uh, maybe I'll turn the... Uh, nobody chooses, I'll turn the flag. I know Shelly likes the cello one, so we could do that one too. We'll start with the flag. Since I got nobody uh, chiming in. Oh, that's the wrong thing I'm clicking. There we go. So I'm just going to hold this in uh, in the pin jaws here. And uh, then we're going to rotate the uh, the pen blank. And um, Sorry, my cord keeps screwing with me. Steve Worcester just got it correct. The pen. Ah, Iraq. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I see that. Oh, you want? Okay, she just yelled at me. She wants the cello. 
So we will do the cello. So Steve, uh, Worcester, thank you for joining. Uh, you're right, Iraq service ribbon. Um, so I don't know much about service ribbons. I'm not a military guy, uh, but I had this kit for some reason. And uh, so, yeah, we'll get that off to you, Steve. I know where you live, so no problem. Um, good stuff. So we'll load up the blank in uh, in this little pin jaws. Not too tight. I'll bring up the mill. Make sure we're going to be clearing okay. So that looks like it's going to be okay. It's a little off center. So let me... Uh, And just kind of use that as a as a way to center it. There we go. Back that out a little bit. Get that up to speed, fifteen hundred or so. I'm gonna put on my safety glasses in case this thing explodes. And uh, let's put. An overhead shot. That's the wrong one. There we go. This other camera's kind of in my way. So the reamer is cleaning out the the brass tube and then glue inside there. And then if I turn this a little bit, you'll see you got carbide cutters here. Then you're going to mill off the end. So we'll come up slowly. And there goes the ribbons. There we got a first brass curl right there. So we're nowhere down to brass. So this is where I had problems last time. You can see. Not really problems, but... You can see on my mill here, I've got residue built up of epoxy that isn't cured yet. So let your epoxy cure overnight. I, uh, I was just behind the eight ball. Last night, I did a demo for the Fort Worth Club. So that's why I really wasn't prepared very well. Turned this bowl and bowl for their demo. So that turned out fairly well. So that's a fun project. I know a few of you have seen this. So... But that's what I was doing uh, yesterday, prepping for that, and and last night uh, doing that demo for the club, and uh, so that was fun. Um, and so I'm not quite as prepared uh, for doing this kind of stuff. So we got a nice brass uh, cleaning on that. You can see the glint of it. So we'll stick the other end in. I'm gonna have to clean this off a little bit. Solvent might work, but this works as well so a little bit of cleaning up that residue this won't happen if you let your epoxy cure like i said and it could be my epoxy is old is not not curing as quickly as it should but you know, it's what I had in the shop, so that's what I used. And that's feeling all right. Okay. Let's get this lined up for this side. Let's see how well that looks a little off. Let me just... Uh, This would be easier probably in a drill press with uh, with the right sort of um, vice, you know, one of those um, whatever center pinning vices. I'm not sure what they're called, but I don't have that. I don't have cameras over there, so 
That's why we're going with this. And we'll turn that on. Mill this out. Just gonna turn that a little bit so you can see the, the cutter in action. Getting up close. Just about there. There we go. Got a little bit of brass showing. Take that all the way out. And I think that'll work. So there we go. That's the pen mill. Cuts really nice ribbons, as you can see. Um, so nice and sharp. Uh, you can rotate these cutters and move them around. So the other um, thing about this pen mill is you can take a little set screw and you remove uh, the pen mill and put in any other size. They got a little flat here milled where that set screw was going to hit. So it secures in there very nicely. These are sort of premium tools. They are expensive, but they work well. So that's the milling done. Um, now we need to take the chuck off and we will chuck key. There it is. Put the precision pen mandrel in and use that. So pen mandrels, uh, you know, I got one in a, uh, I got a fishing tackle box that I use for storing most of that stuff. And uh, I had a bottle of CA glue in there and it's, <laughs> it exploded and seized around my uh, uh, my pen mill, so I had to get another one. And uh, I've always had a problem with those pen mills, always having some concentricity issues. So this is the Ultra Sure Pen Mandrel. So we'll uh, set this guy up. Used it this morning. So here's the uh, little tube there for shipping. Here's the pen mandrel. It's two collet chucks, one on either side, so just uh, and a nice steel rod. So one end into your Morris taper, stick the rod in there, and you're going to adjust the length of the rod that you're going to have in there based on what you're turning. So we've got a, uh, a boatload of uh, uh, bushings, 11 piece set. There's 11 different sets for all different kinds of pens. Uh, you can get them individually as well, but uh, I have uh, um, not bought the individual ones yet or, or stocked the individual ones. So this is uh, set 25002 for the Sierra pen. That's what these kits are, Sierras. And I found that they're uh, the same kit as a uh, uh, Wall Street 2, which what Woodcraft carries. So that's one cross-reference I found, Lee, if that... Uh, Help. So I'm going to, uh, before I tighten this down a little bit, just by hand, I'm going to put my cello on there. So I got one bushing on that goes on and, uh, fits nicely on there. These precision bushings, let me uh, zoom in a little bit. Here's another feature I like about them or that's unique. They got this little, uh, first of all, they got all the bushing numbers inscribed on them. 02, so 25002. Uh, this one's marked the same. So you know, you can't see that. You know that they belong together. The other thing is, I got this little line all the way around it. It's a wear line. So when you're cutting and you start wearing this part of metal down, as soon as you get down to where that ridge is in there, that's time for uh, a new set of bushing. So that that's a uh, um, an indi indicator that if you wear your metal down uh, to that uh, scribe line, then uh, um, you've worn out your your bushings. So that's a nice little touch. So you want to expose this rod about three quarters inch or more uh, beyond um, the uh, end of the bushings. So once that's done, I'll just kind of give that a little snug up 
and uh, stick the the tailstock end is uh, it's uh, got a uh, set screw here that or a pin that aligns. You shouldn't need to take it apart, but you can. You can see a collet in there, and you see that groove in there that aligns with that pin in there. So you know it's always got to go back the same way. You don't need to take that apart unless you got to clean it. So that goes in the tailstock. Let me widen this out. And let me remove that for a second. So all we do, let me move that out of the way. Don't really need to do anything except bring that up and tighten the tailstock. And that cinches, pushes things together, cinches this collet, and so things are rotating together. Nothing, uh, no other adjustments to do whatsoever. So that's it. We're all set. And uh, now we cut between the lines, so to speak. Uh, just to finish off the whole woodpecker thing, I'm going to use their round tool to cut this. I'm going to set tool height, so I'm cutting on center. Tool rest height. So that's pretty close, a little bit more. And we'll put camera four back up there. Um, with camera two or three, what is that doing? Maybe that's maybe a better view for the side camera. So we'll go overhead and there. Does that work? Or is that better? That might be better. Let me see if I can zoom that in a little bit more. Oops, wrong way. There we go. Let's do that one. So we're going to turn this quite fast, and uh, away we go. Safety glasses on, tailstock tight, 3,000, 3,200 RPM. This doesn't take long at all. Those rubber bands turn right away. They're a little bit annoying to, to get out of the way. There we go. Let me check. I haven't looked at the. Uh... Who's that? Oh, Vaughn. Ah, Vaughn is playing hooky. Okay. <laughs> Call her out on this, but nobody else from the office watches it. So, Vaughn is one of the office staff that uh, the doctor's office Shelly works for. So, um... yeah, she... that's right. She is a violinist. So, we'll uh, we'll get this one for her. So, uh yeah uh i want to have no turn uh, text one is awesome let's see congratulations steve you on the pen so the wife is keeping up on uh oh what does tony say it's also the gatsby is the gatsby uh a psi um pen i think sierra's psi maybe that's uh um one of the other manufacturers Good to know, Tony. So that's a good cross-reference. That's one thing that uh, uh, we're trying to build out is sort of a cross-reference of these pen bushings to other pen manufacturers' kits. So this is where that wear line works well. You kind of hit it. How's that look? That looks pretty cool. I like that. One of the things that I've always had a problem with um, um, uh, pen mandrels is when I loosen it and turn it, is there any concentricity? Is there any sort of lips that show here? So let's take a look, see. So I loosen that off. 
I'm going to hold the bushings where they are, rotate the pin, and then tighten the bushings back up. And then I feel no contrasticity at all, no, no out of balance whatsoever around this whole pen. So that's one nice thing about this system. It's so precise. You, get, you don't have any of that sort of um, misalignment, you know, uh, sticking the point in the end of that rod and some of the pen mandrels, it kind of just moves and has too much flex. This doesn't have any flex. Of course, this is a single tube pen. If you have a double tube pen, uh, I haven't tried that yet. So, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the way they've got this collet system on both sides, it's, uh, it's going to work out just fine. Okay. I think that's it. So we'll go to sanding now. Take a look at that, see if everything's intact. Yeah, everything looks good, glued in nice. That is not a split, that's the uh, the base of the cello. So it's a piece of wood that's glued in there. Got a little bit of figure in the maple. So we'll do a bit of sanding. Um, I have some rather old sandpaper up on the, uh, I'm gonna turn on the dust collector. Turn on the dust collector, there we go. It's sitting right behind me, so. Um, start off with what I got, 180. This is about 1100 RPM. These uh, components are all made of chromoly, uh, pretty hard uh, alloy. Um, have a nice uh, finish to them and stuff. I, I think that's uh, the shininess is what the way it looks when it comes off the the mill. It's not a coating, I don't believe. Uh, 240. Three twenty. Four hundred. Vaughn, you're gonna make me blush, but I'll put it up because I'm a little vain. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> So I'm glad you are able to join, even though you're supposed to be working. Nicely done, Vaughn. So that's uh, 400. Now I've got, uh, I'm not going to wet sand. I, I probably normally would. I've got the uh, set of micro mash pads here, uh, but we will just kind of dry sand uh, and get up through the grits. Let's take a look how that looks first. Looks a little dusty. A little bit better. This is brown or rust. This is uh, 1500. I probably should go to a 600 and 800 before I get here, but this works. Put it in the top, pull out the green one, which is 18. I've got to clean these micro mesh pads. And uh, next is black, 2400. Start to see a little bit of sheen show up. And we got 10, which is 3200. wine or brown, whatever that's called. Thirty six hundred. We'll do one more. Four thousand. Let's 
see how that looks. That looks pretty good. Let me zoom in on that a little bit. So I'm going to do a uh, a quick CA finish. And I'm not uh, not an expert at this, uh, so I'm sure there's better ways or more appropriate procedures for doing this, but uh, um, I'm sure you'll let me know. Let's see. Uh, um, Tony says, I'm not sure who makes it, but bushings are the same. Oh, okay. So it's good to know. Um, thanks, Tony. Appreciate that. It's Facebook, uh, sorry, YouTube. It says it's still healthy. I'm going to just uh, let me check my live stream on this side. Yeah. It's still running for me, so that's all right. Oops, where'd I go? Sorry, working the mouse over on the other side. So let's uh, let's drop a bit of CA glue here on, and we'll get this turning slowly. I'll watch that. I just got my finger soaked in CA glue, so. Let that dry. I can smell it here already. Yep. Another little soak there. Looking pretty sharp. Thing I always kind of wondered about this method is uh, that it uh, does it glue the uh, tube to the bushing, but they they come apart pretty quick. That paper towel is getting warm on the back side, so let me grab another one. Oh, that's nasty. Okay. Fold that, fold that, make a pad. Yeah, I'm sure others will tell me how many, uh, how many coats of CA to do and how to cut it back and stuff, but uh, I'll leave that to the pen experts. So I've never done a CA finish. I always have used friction finishes. How do you keep the CA off the bushings? Yeah, well, you don't really. Well, there we go. That smoke coming off the, the cloth there. So that is uh, some hot CA glue. <laughs> Um, you don't really, Tony, it just kind of builds up a little bit. You'll scrape it away, um, on your next turning and stuff. They don't really attach that much because you're nice and tight, um, with, uh, with, uh, squeezing the bushings on there. So I haven't had a problem. It does stick just a tiny bit. I won't want to throw those in the garbage yet. Those are too warm. That's still a bit tacky. So we'll let that dry a little bit, and then we'll sand it back a little bit. Um, but they'll come apart pretty easily right at the uh, when you take the tube off. I haven't had anything stick before, so. What does Steve say? You use uh, ultra-high molecular weight bushings made for CA finish. Yeah, you could do that. It wouldn't stick to that, so. I've never uh, never had those bushings, so I don't I haven't done a lot of pen turning for a while. I know Steve, you do quite a bit or have done. So, um, where would you get those? 
Uh, do most pen suppliers carry those now? I think I may need another coat just to kind of dissolve that last one that kind of gummed up a little bit. Thin coat and let that satin cure. What does Lee say? I use nylon finishing bushings. Oh, okay. So for the finishing process, you swap them out. That's a cool idea. Good to know. Steve says we carry them, but haven't made it to the website yet. Oh, okay. Good to know. Maybe uh, you got a bit of work there to do, Steve, to get them up on the website. So know how, I know how that goes. Good stuff. Um, for those that don't know, Steve is uh, turningwood.com. So check that out. Um, you know, go ahead and throw that link in the uh, in the chat if you want, Steve. That's fine. So I'm, I'm a bit gummy, a bit tacky here. Maybe this CA glue is too old, or maybe I apply them too quickly. We'll let that cure. And I might just hand sand this uh, later. So, so that's uh, that's the end of uh, doing that. So we'll pull this away, and we'll just see how well these bushings come apart. So, not as well as the first time, but that just kind of snaps off there. There we go. So it's come apart. So there's a little bit of CA glue. Uh, you know, I can't really tell around the rim, but otherwise they're perfectly fine. So this is actually cured. So maybe I'll stick this back on and just do a little fine sanding uh, and then we'll assemble. So just tighten that up. Oh, excuse me. A little bit of a runny nose. So what did I end up? I ended up on teal. So maybe I'll go back one or two. And I probably should do this in terms of wet sanding, but I don't have any um, way of doing that right now. It doesn't take much, but it's just getting water. Brown. See how that's turning out. I think I may have to go back a bit further. Let's go back to black, which is, well, green 1800 there we go we're getting some action there so green done black it's 2400 10 3200 This is 36. Four thousand. Purple is six thousand. Eight thousand.
It's not the best finish. There it is there, though. Oh, excuse me. I gotta blow my nose. Got a little sawdust on the on the nostrils. So we go. A little pen done. Let's see. Can we put it together? Let's uh, let's grab the kit. Let's see. This is cello. And where's my? Widen out a little bit. Get the parts and pieces. I should have a little board here somewhere. all our parts and pieces this bluefin one looks kind of cool but when i glued the pieces in i forgot to take the tube out so it's only in there with ca glue so we'll try that one off camera <laughs> so we'll see how that goes it's really only one piece to squish in that's this cap so it's a cello so it stands on the foot here so this makes sense to put it this way and then uh, squeeze that together. You get to this point, you get all thumbs, right? So I'll hold that. Try and hold it square as possible. And I think I want to make sure I set. Well, that's where it's going to live. Try and put them on the opposite side of the uh, the pin or the the clip. There it goes together. And then we've got spring goes on there. Nib goes in there. This screws on in there. There you go cello pen a little nip can oh, that's off look at that it writes cello pen so that's uh that's pen making uh in sort of the quick and dirty method and maybe not the best best finishing method but that works so there's steve's turning wood.com so he's got some nylon pen bushings and all kinds of stuff, sanding uh, and other stuff. Take a look at that. So pen, uh, sorry, Steve, uh, what do you what do you think? Does it look all right? The finish is horrible, but I think uh, Vaughn's going to love it. So um, it'll wear enough for, for what she's going to do. And uh, there you go. So if you have uh, any sort of questions about this, stuff let me know lee i hope that helps 
answer a few questions for you. You probably know a lot more about pen turning than I do. So, but uh, I'm really fascinated with this dual call it system. The one thing about this um, tailstock piece, it doesn't auto eject from my Powermatic. The uh, Morris taper is just a bit too short to hit the uh, hit the end before the lead screw bottoms out. But there's a little little shipping tube. Just undo this a little bit. Put that on there. Tighten that back up. And so this is a used one. It's probably be my personal one, but uh, if I do run out of stock, I will offer this as a used tool at a discount. That's the Ultra Shear Pen Mandrel, the bushing kit, the five piece kit, uh, my bushings. And then uh, all kinds of bushings for all the different kits with a uh, with a bag for all of them. So I will probably use um, right on here now, so I don't forget. used and then same thing for the other other items so if you got any questions let me know and uh, let me check the chat see where we're going okay let's see was lee uh, say what b pen kit did you use um, that was the uh, Sierra. Um, so here's the Iraq service ribbon kit. Their Kalashan kits and their Sierra. Where's the uh, what's the bag say? I got a bag in here somewhere. Let's pull this out. Sierra pen gold. Uh, let's see this cello pen. Looks like it's the black. Um, or sorry, no, it's gold here. They're all gold, I think, the ones I have. So there's the Iraq service that's going to Steve. Cello pen going to Vaughn. And uh, so that's Sierra pen. If I look, let me see. I'm going to share my screen for a second, Lee. So let me... Uh, let me do this application window. Chrome tab. That's what I want. Woodpecker. Okay, so here I'm on the site. So if I go to um, this is after some of your advice, I think, Lee. Uh, when I went to the actually I go to the push bushings page i put all the pictures of all the bushings in here so this is uh the two p's 25002 so that's the o2 set and then along with that there's the drawing so let me see if i can make that a little bigger so you get the dimensional drawing it's hard to see on the screen maybe it's easy for you but uh hard for me so all of the bushing kits are on there and there are respective drawings. And then I dumped in the spreadsheet that I sent you. Um, woodpecker pen kit cross-referenced with a woodpecker bushing kit. So if I open that up, I wonder if this will open up so you can see it. Probably not. I'll have to share another tab. So let me do that. Um, screen share. Screen share. Application window spreadsheet 
So here's a little spreadsheet I put together. It's got the pen kit name. So we go down, here's the, uh, I'll highlight it here. Oops, wrong one, one up. Sierra, um, Sierra normal, Sierra grip, Sierra button click, elegant, all that stuff. And it's bushing is 25002. And these other numbers are cross reference to woodpecker, uh, woodpecker kit. So um, I don't yet have a, uh, trying to use my mouse again with my left hand. Um, no, let me put full away. That, that, that kind of works so I can get in the picture. So this, uh, shit, I can't point to it. <laughs> There's that word again. Um, but I don't have yet a cross-reference of woodpecker pen kits to um, other manufacturers' pen kits. Um, the Pen Turners Association, International Pen Turners, I forget what it's called. Um, I don't know if they have it. They, you could check there. Uh, you probably know that better than I do, so um, that's something to check out. So, yeah, that little spreadsheet is is on the website as well. So, take a look at that. Hopefully, that uh, that helps. So, um, Steve Worcester, good job. Looks good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Tony says, I like that mandrel setup. Maybe I'll ask Santa for one. Yeah. So, check the... Uh, the uh, do that screen share again. So the bushing kit, that's all 11 bushings, 119. They run about between 12 and 15 bucks a pop for the precision bushings, individual sets. Um, I don't have the individual sets on the website yet, um, but if I get enough requests for it, I will do that. The... Uh, the uh, mandrel is $139. So these aren't cheap, but they are very precise, and I think it will bring your pen turning to the next level. So um, that's uh, that's the, the thing about... Um, and they're all made in the U.S. These are all made by Woodpecker here, uh, here in the U.S. And was it uh, Strongville, Ohio? So... Let's see. Let me go on to the next one. Steve says, I want a mandrel setup. Okay. Uh, just uh, give me a call, Steve, or place the order online. Either way. Um, I have, <clears throat> I want to say I have three, two new ones. Um, maybe one. I don't know. A couple in stock. Um, I can certainly order more. So, And I got plenty of bushing or pen mail kits. So either five or 11, 13 piece set. You see on the on the screen there. So and uh, turning tools, we got the woodpecker turning tools, pen size, medium size, and large size. I'm out of the large size except for the one diamond point, so that's good news. Um, let's see. Do regular bushings fit onto it? Yes, yeah. So it's a standard quarter inch mandrel. So if I uh, if I had uh, bushings from from uh, you know Woodworld here in town or PSI or anybody else. Uh, they they'll fit on that shaft. I'm I'm uh, I'm pretty sure. In fact, let me uh, let me just uh, reach around. It's a good question. Something I probably should have verified myself. Oh, there goes all my pin blanks. I'm just over here digging in the cupboard. I'll show you this. Bit of a mess I have of a tackle box. Something I do have to clean up. Move this out of the way. This is what I was talking about. So let me on the bottom right. So here's my the old Plano kit and. Uh, all the instructions there, all pen bushings. <laughs> this, is, this is what I was talking about. Do not leave your CA glue in with your pen mandrels. So that's, uh, I mean, it's still usable. Didn't get on the thing and I can still use it, but let's take a set of uh, 
bushings. Oh, these are PSI bushings, whatever they are. Let's pull out this. We've got the PS or the woodpecker uh, mandrel. And end bushing, middle bushing, end bushing. Yep, so there is a little bit of wobble in there. Not in that one. Yeah, but that's it. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, it's got to be one time a live stream that I, I get scolded for my language. Thanks, Sally. Okay. Yeah, I'm on the way. Uh, Lee Beatles, I like mine that you sent me along with the bushings, Todd. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Hopefully you put it to use. Uh, I'd like to see some of the pens you turn. So um, the shaft is seven millimeter in size. Yeah, okay, seven millimeters. Uh, it's pretty damn close to quarter inch, just slightly over. Maybe it's, maybe it's slightly under 0.248. I can't remember, but um, but yeah. So regular bushings will work on it. So you're not out any investment in, in bushings you have so far. Um, so yeah, you know, these old, these are useless. They work for about, you know, 20 pens and then you're done. So uh, hi, Jeffrey. Thank you for joining today. Yeah. Okay. So there's people on here joining that I don't see that Shelly is saying hi to. So that's good. I'm glad. I don't know why I'm not seeing them. Uh, hi, Chris. Thank you for joining. Good to have you here, Tony. How old is that film canister? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. there's a few of them in here. So they're handy as heck for keeping bushings in, although I don't have any bushings in any of them. So, um, but yeah. Those, uh, oh, look at that, I do have a couple. That's the PSI Polaris. So, that one's hard to open. But yeah, uh, great little containers for, for holding bushing. Otherwise, I just keep them in here. So, this is kind of uh, obsolete stuff now. Not really obsolete, but um, all kinds of drill bits in here. So, that's handy. But I'll have to clean up this kit and add some more, some more stuff onto that one. So uh, it is older than dirt. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, did the woodpecker bushings fit tighter? Yeah, I believe they did. Um, so let's pull out that. Uh, let's just grab a. Uh, where's the? Uh, used. So these are the ones I used today. So I did feel uh, some, let's stick that in there so I'll drop it. Some slop uh, in the PSI bushing, at least the one. But these, if I put them on there, there is very, there's no, hardly any movement at all. I can't really move that at all. I'm moving the shaft when I do that, so. Um, Yeah, no, no movement in that at all. It's, it's just, it's, it's amazing the tolerances they have here. So, yeah, I think they're, they're pretty precise. Um, you know, uh, I don't know if you know Woodpecker that well, um, Mary Alice, but uh, take a look at their website, woodpeck.com. Uh, they make all kinds of um, woodworking tools um, and stuff, and everything that they, not everything they sell, they make there, but everything that they, manufacturers made right there in their own plant uh they make a lot of squares and and uh rulers and and uh, things like that and all these turning tools are all made there all the uh the bushings all the uh, uh the mandrel the the pen mill um all these uh turning tools uh made in strongville ohio that's right there on the label so and uh I like these. They got the uh, the size, mid-size round on the bottom. And this white circle depicts that it's a, uh, a round cutter as well. So if you do have these in a in a holder where you're 
got them stacked like that, you can easily identify them. So they got this uh, funky shaped shaft flat here and then 45 degree shear angle on either side for shear cutting. So hence the name ultra shear is the, uh, the brand um, of the turning tools. So, so hopefully that answers uh, Mary Alice. I think they're all fit that way. So that's good. Uh, I'm here too. Thank you, Steve, for joining. Appreciate it. Um, good to know. They have taken plenty of my money. Okay, good. Yeah. So uh, I've been a, a woodpecker uh, customer for, uh, I don't know, got to be 20, 20 years anyway, since they started opening. I think my first router lift was a woodpecker um, system. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that is going to, uh, I think kind of wrap it up today, folks. Uh, a little bit more of a, a sales pitchy sort of live stream than the normal. Uh, but I wanted to do a pen for a while to answer a few questions from my regulars, Lee and Tony and stuff. And, uh, um, you know, turn a pen. I've got a few kits that, uh, you saw that I'm going to turn as gifts. So Steve, congratulations, Vaughn. Congratulations. It's, uh, it's good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Anyway, so it's uh, uh, top of the hour, uh, passed a little bit. So uh, that's uh, that's me for today. Um, 2.30, Todd. I'll see you next Friday. I'm not sure what we're going to do, uh, but it'll be the day after Thanksgiving. So uh, I might work a little slower because I might be a little fatter. But uh, I want everybody to enjoy the weekend. Uh, have a great Thanksgiving. Stay healthy and safe. 2.30 Todd. I will see you later. Come and join me next week. Bye for now.